My view on what's happening to this country is no secret. I think we are increasingly entering civil war territory. And because of the way politics and news works, it's hard to know exactly when that shot heard around the world will be. Perhaps we're in the civil war. Perhaps it hasn't started yet. Perhaps this is the bleeding Kansas phase. Perhaps it's pre bleeding Kansas phase. And uh, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen. But Donald Trump has filed a lawsuit against the U.S. government, claims most Americans are distressed by shockingly aggressive search of former president's home. He's trying to stop the review of the documents that were seized. Over on the left and the establishment left, they're talking about how Donald Trump had 300 classified documents. On the right, they're saying Donald Trump has, let's just call it very strong declassification powers. In fact, he is the guy who declassifies things. The argument being, if the president of the United States needs to negotiate or discuss sensitive issues, he has to determine whether or not it is classified or not. Imagine a president negotiating with Vladimir Putin, but unable to negotiate on where our military would be leaving from. Sorry, Putin, I can't tell you where our troops are, but we will move them. Trust me. That's not a really good negotiation, is it? But of course, the left says he didn't have the authority to take certain documents. And I think PolitiFact proves that wrong. So, of course, we're now seeing leaked letters. We're seeing the FBI raid the home of Donald Trump. We are seeing an unprecedented bifurcation of power in this country, which I believe will lead to a civil war. And to make matters worse, in this lawsuit, Donald Trump has listed himself as pro se. Now, many are pointing out this means he's representing himself. And as the saying goes, the man who represents himself as a fool for a client I don't know if this will work out for Donald Trump. There are lawyers listed on this uh, on this filing. Some have said that they just didn't file to enter into the case exactly, but they are perhaps assisting with this. Alan Dershowitz has said he's spoken to many law firms and they've outright said their lawyers are not allowed to go anywhere near Donald Trump. Things are getting crazy in this country, my friends. Politico reported that a couple lawyers who won a major gun rights case split from their law firm because the firm dropped Second Amendment issues. They won on gun rights, a good thing, and their firm dropped the issue. Sorry, I, I, I just I look at all this and I think everything is breaking down and falling apart. It is not necessarily fascism that's on the rise, but some kind of totalitarianism, some kind of cult like authoritarian ideology. When people are just bending over backwards to the establishment machine without question and there's little resistance We know where this goes. The government raiding the home of a a former president is unprecedented. And worse still, Donald Trump is filing a lawsuit challenging the government. But it seems like the right, the MAGA crowd only ever react. Donald Trump, when he was president, he could have done a lot. He didn't. Some people blame Jared Kushner, saying he was telling Trump, don't do these things. Don't do this. Trump could have left Twitter and created Truth Social at the peak of, of his of his presence, of his presidency, forcing the media to sign up to his system. He didn't do it. What I've heard is that Kushner told him, don't do it. Don't leave Twitter. You got to be on Twitter. Now, I think Kushner's done some good things. He's responsible for the Abraham Accords, so they say. But when you enter into the lion's den as an outsider, like Trump did, And then you think you can just do your thing because you're the president. This is what happens. And Trump only, only files a lawsuit now after they already raided him. My question, why didn't Trump announce he was running for president before the raid happened? When news was bubbling up, I said he should do it. Now they're trying to say, well, you know, they're going after him because he's running for for office. Okay. now they're going to say the opposite. He's only going to run because and then whether or not it's true, we know Trump was going to run. But they're going to keep playing the narrative. And the problem is, we know they're lying. They know we know they're lying. But the people who keep supporting them don't know or care. And they march in lockstep with the bots and the lies and the manipulation. You have to get proactive. There's a lot of good news going around. Liz Cheney's defeat. Brian Stelter's out at CNN. CNN is changing their tune. Good news. Fauci's resigning. And now we're learning that Liz Cheney's talk about running in 2024 is actually really, really bad news for Democrats. In fact, it would pull a ton of Biden support for to Liz Cheney, and then Trump will win if he runs in 2024. And so does Liz Cheney if she runs as an independent, which I don't necessarily think she will. It seems like every day there's some kind of crazy escalation. 
And I hate to be the bearer of bad news all the time, but this is big news. I mean, Donald Trump fighting back is good, but let's read the story and figure out what's going on with the latest escalation in the political civil war that's happening in this country. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to support our work. As a member, you'll get access to exclusive segments on the TimCast IRL podcast Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m., as well as the Cast Castle vlog, more silly comedy and fun that goes up tonight, Tuesdays at 7 p.m., as well as Tales from the Inverted World. We are not expanding our political offerings. We, we will a little bit, but we're trying to just build culture. We've got a new single being released from the first single under TimCast Records coming uh, on, on Friday. And it's, uh, it's just a song. That's it. Just a regular old song. Because we want to build culture and we are not trying to make everything about politics, even though politics is pop culture. But we do have a political song coming next. We just didn't want to come out the gate with political music. The next one that's coming out is very political and it rags on the mainstream media, so you'll probably get a kick out of it. But smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Here's the story from Law and Crime. Trump files a lawsuit against U.S. government claims most Americans are distressed by shockingly aggressive search of former president's home. They said the litigation is positioned as a motion for judicial oversight and additional relief. It is docketed under the caption Trump v. United States government. Politics cannot be allowed to impact the administrative justice, the motion asserts. It also does not initially refer to Trump as, as a past tense president. President Donald J. Trump is the clear front runner in the 2024 Republican presidential primary and in the 2024 general election should he decide to run. Beyond that, his endorsement in the 2022 midterm elections has been decisive for Republican candidates. And we'll pause real quick. It has been. And he also endorsed Democrats. And it's going to be funny when those Democrats win. And then Trump's like, see, my endorsements are perfect, even when I endorse Democrats. Uh huh. Anyway, later, however, the document asserts that the search involved the former president's home, a tacit acknowledgement that Joe Biden is indeed the president. What does that have to do with anything? We had Rick Santorum on. We referred to him as Senator Santorum. It's a title, an honorific. He is President Trump. He's not currently the president. We know that, but we still say President Obama because it's a title they've earned or achieved. The motion calls the August 8th search of Mar-a-Lago a shockingly aggressive move with no understanding of the distress that it would cause most Americans. Roughly two dozen special agents from the FBI, directed by attorneys at the DOJ, raided the home of President Donald Trump. It goes on. According to the government, the agent seized documents, privileged and or potentially privileged materials and other items, including photos, handwritten notes, and even President Trump's passports that were outside the lawful reach of an already over overbroad warrant. President Trump, like all citizens, is protected by the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Property seized in violation of his constitutional rights must be returned forthwith. Law enforcement is a shield that protects Americans. It cannot be used as a weapon for political purposes. Therefore, we seek judicial assistance in the aftermath of an unprecedented and unnecessary raid on President Trump's home. The privileged materials referenced are purported to be communications between Trump and his top advisors. The documents claim those materials are presumptively privileged and that protecting the purported privilege is important to the institution of the presidency, no matter who is in office. And he's right here. The craziest thing about this is that since this whole January 6th stuff started, they've been asserting Trump's inner circle executive privilege, and it's been denied by Biden. That means any president who leaves loses privilege. Then what's the point of having privilege at all? The executive branch needs to be able to have its communications to operate independently. But if they can be stripped afterwards, that is the sort of Damocles hanging over the head of any president. They're going to say, I can't talk about these issues because that branch will come after me. No, a president needs to be able to negotiate. This is crazy. One section of the filing balks that there was no exigency to support a forceful raid on Mar-a-Lago. Exigency, however, is usually a word employed in legal circles to ex legal, legal circles to excuse the need for a warrant in pursuit of, of a suspected criminal. Here, a warrant was secured. Yes, but I think we get the point. There was no need to raid the house. They could have shut up, knocked on the door and said, we need them now. I suppose, however, in the event that they denied it, there, there would have been this or whatever. But apparently Trump was cooperating. They say another section of the motion confirms that Trump was the subject of a May 11th, 2022 grand jury subpoena, which sought documents bearing classification markings. The documents contain multiple hearty assurances that Trump was cooperative with multiple government 
uh, government efforts to glean boxes of documents from the partial uh, palatial, sorry, Florida compound. One such visit is alleged to have occurred as follows. On June 3rd, 2022, Jay Brett, chief of, of the counterintelligence and export control section in the DOJ's National Security Division, came to Mar-a-Lago accompanied by three FBI agents. President Trump greeted them in the dining room at Mar-a-Lago. There were two other attendees, the person designated as the custodian of records for the office of Donald Trump and counsel for the president, for President Trump. Before leaving the group, President Trump's last words to Mr. Brett and the FBI agents were as follows, quote, whatever you need, just let us know. Brett inspected what the motion describes as a storage room and responsive documents were provided. A follow up conversation is said to have included a request by Brett that Trump secure the room a second lock was therefore, uh, I'm sorry, secure the room, a second lock was therefore installed at Trump's alleged request. What followed was the now famous search. I think infamous is the appropriate word. Trump's attorneys claim Brett requested that Mar-a-Lago security cameras be turned off during the execution of the warrant. That request, the motion indicates, was declined. The motion additionally says Trump tried to send a message to Attorney General Merrick Garland through Brett on August 11th. Trump wants the Attorney General to know that he has been hearing from people over the country that the ra- uh, about the raid. If there was one word to describe their mood, it's angry. The heat is building up. The pressure is building. Whatever I can do to take the heat down, to bring the pressure down, just let us know. Garland held a press conference just hours after the phone call in which he admitted personally approving the warrant. Okay, so th- we know a lot about this. The point is Trump is suing, saying stop. Here's where it gets crazy. MD Wheel points out, pro se means Trump is going alone. Alex Mullen says new. It appears Trump's legal team has filed an SDFL cause listed as motion for judicial review. No document available yet, uh, though. Represented by Donald J. Trump, pro se. That's interesting. Trump is uh, journalists. Please stop bearing the lead. Pro se. Trump is representing himself. A lot of people are saying, okay, it's no longer a pro se filing. Here we go from empty wheel. I forget whether Halligan is the garage lawyer or something else. There are other individuals on this. Okay, so Trump initially filed this representing himself. Apparently, there are a bunch of lawyers listed who still needed to file that they were going to be signing on. Here's where it gets crazy. Trump has some lawyers, but this is where I see this country breaking down. And this is why it is so important we build culture. Alan Dershowitz says every reputable attorney he's spoken with has told him their firms won't let them go anywhere near Trump. Let's talk about music. It, it, and, this, and this is relevant to this. It, it is. So um, I think it was last year. One of my favorite bands growing up, The Offspring, the first album I ever bought, the first song I ever learned how to play, The Kids Aren't All Right. Man, I think I was like 13. I was younger than that, probably. Man, might have been like 12. What year was that? 97, 98? Pete Parada was their drummer. When he was younger, he suffered from Guillain-Barre syndrome. And so when he went to the doctor, they said, the risk is not worth it. I'm sorry, we recommend against the vaccine. It's unfortunate. He wasn't this hardcore anti-vaxxer dude. He's just a drummer. The offspring fired him. Well, I talked to him and said, bro, I would be honored if you would play drums with, for for the, you know, write the drum tracks to the music that we write. You know, the music I've been putting together my whole life. If you told me that I would have the offspring's drummer playing music, I never would have believed you. But here he is. After 14 years, he's fired from the offspring. And now he's working with me and many other bands. A lot of uh, well-known bands and punk bands and things like that. We put out a promo, tremendous response within like 12 hours, half a million views. Amazing. But on Twitter, people are really going after us. There there are other bands, you know, older bands insulting him, calling him the anti-vax drummer, just really awful things. This is important. You see, the goal of the left is to try and make it impossible for you to work. Cancel culture. How could Trump not get a lawyer? The Klan was able to get the ACLU. Culture is the most important thing. Cultural enforcement is more powerful than any law. The ability for people to work and be comfortable is more important than any, any law. That's the important factor here. It's why it was so important that I thought we needed to to immediately hire someone like Pete. I mean, first of all, let me just say, Yeah, when they fired this dude, they made a huge mistake. The dude's an amazing drummer. He's a really nice guy. He's calm. He's not super political. And he's just a drummer, man. He's a regular old guy. Plays drums. You know, for me, it's just like a dream come true to be able to to, to, to play music with the guy who played with the offspring for 14 years. It's really crazy. But the reality is, for me, 
We have to make sure we open up spaces for these people to exist and live. Otherwise, this is what happens. Trump can't get a lawyer. They're insulting his lawyer saying Trump's got the garage lawyer. Trump's pro se. I'm like, dude, that's not a good thing. We, we as a country for the longest time recognize that the worst of the worst still got lawyers. But what they're doing is making sure that anyone who goes against the machine will never be able to work again. Now, Trump can't get a good lawyer to defend himself. Take a look at this. You guys need to understand this. This is important. Firm splits with lawyers who won gun rights case at Supreme Court. The exit follows a decision by Kirkland and Ellis to drop Second Amendment litigation. We need lawyers who will fight for our rights under the Second Amendment to keep and bear arms. They got axed. They won. They got axed. They are telling these lawyers, if you defend gun rights, you're gone. If you defend Trump, you're gone. If you go back a few decades, the ACLU defended the Klan. You go back a few years, they defended Unite the Right in Charlottesville, but they got scared because these crackpot, liberal, woke, whatever, started pulling their donations. They are trying to homogenize a machine to make it so you can't work. Now, look, I play music. I'm not a lawyer. So what can I do when they try to destroy the career of someone like P. Parada? I can say, bro, it would be an honor for us to hire you to play music. We hired Taylor Silverman. You guys know Taylor Silverman? She spoke out because as a female skateboarder, amateur skateboarder competing, trying to earn money, a biological male was allowed to compete against her and win. And on more than one occasion, this has happened, taking prize money away from biological females. And they argue, well, it's a women's division and trans women are women. But we didn't create a women's division because sometimes people feel feminine. We did it because there's biological differences between males and females. We hired Taylor for one. She's great. She's a good skateboarder. We need the talent for the new skate projects we're launching. And it's the same thing. I want to make sure every single person that I can support, and it's not, it's not everybody, you know, I I do what I can, that if they're trying to destroy your career and ability to work over things like this, there will be a space and an opportunity for you. It's why at TimCast.com, we are using parallel economy for all memberships starting now. The default, when you sign up, is Parallel Economy, a censorship-resistant financial transaction service co-funded by Dan Bongino. This is the nightmare scenario. So my point, I'm not a law firm. I can't hire lawyers. I can work with lawyers. But lawyers are saying they can't work with Trump because they work for firms. Y'all need to start your own firms. Do something. Don't stand for this. This is the death of the republic. If you can't get a lawyer, what can I do? I can launch projects with people who have their careers destroyed, who are good people who shouldn't have had their careers destroyed and resist the machine for as long as I can. So Pete can't play. You know what? Pete Parada, he's now on a Times Square billboard for the past several days and for the rest for for the next uh, week or so. There is a there are two massive billboards With this dude, they tried to destroy his career. Nah, man, this is a good dude, and he's good at what he does, and through no fault of his own. So we got him up on a Times Square billboard. Bring the haters. You're not going to get us down. And this is why they're freaking out. This is why they're coming so hard on Twitter, so angry about this. On all the other platforms, everybody's digging the music. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend we're writing, you know, uh, legendary, epic composites. We're writing music we like for people who might like it. I don't expect to be a a billboard hot 100 or anything like that. We're just having a good time and we're trying to run new businesses. Not every song released by every every person becomes a double platinum hit. Most music, they find their audience. People make like trip hop or whatever. And it's like not you're not going to be billboard hot 100, but you're going to have a show, man. And you're going to have fans and we're going to make that space available. We are going to build culture in all spaces to make sure, like the Daily Wire is doing, when they come to you and say, we're going to destroy your career if you dare defy us, they're going to say, bro, go ahead, because I can go work for the Daily Wire and I can go work for Timcast and they've created a space where it's possible to live and succeed without bending the knee to your psychopathy. This is nuts. That Trump can't get a lawyer is insane. The FBI raided his home. The dude needs to be able to find representation. O.J. Simpson got lawyers. There are so many people that, that the worst of the worst are able to get lawyers, even if it's just a public defender. Insider reports. Alan Dershowitz, the lawyer who defended former President Trump in his Senate impeachment trial, told Insider 
that most reputable firm, law firms weren't letting their attorneys go anywhere near Trump and his legal issues, snow, as his legal issues snowballed. All big firm lawyers have told me that their firms won't let them do it. The firms won't let them go near any case involving Trump. These are firms that want to continue to have clients, and they know if they represent Donald Trump, they'll lose a lot of clients. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Bro, every person in the world can rag on me for the stuff they're making. I don't care. Not everybody likes everything we do, but we've launched a series of shows. Cast Castle, Pop Culture Crisis, Tales from the Inverted World, Chicken City. We got a new gaming show that we're going to be launching soon, and we're just trying things out. We tried to do a and d show. It didn't really work out. We piloted it. We, we couldn't make it work. We're doing music. Hey, guess what? I write songs. If people don't like the songs, that's fine. I still write songs. We're still going to put work into it and publish it. We are going to build culture and build a space. I don't care about, you know, uh, what these people try to do to destroy us, to try and destroy you. We're going to do it and we're going to be successful. Here's the reality. When it comes to anything, there are a lot of people that don't want to put in the elbow grease, the blood, sweat and tears. And the people who succeed are the people who don't care. They're the people who carve themselves out of stone instead of sitting back and saying, I need you to help me. And so I take a look at some of these, these, these bigger artists. I take a look at these law firms. If you knew in your heart of hearts that Donald Trump had a case, or at the very least, it was a great opportunity to make money and everybody deserves good representation, you would say, I'm out. I'll do my own firm. I'll make this work. Trump needs representation. But then what happens is they say, if you do this, you'll never work again. And they say, OK, I'm backing off. Sorry, that's the kind of spinelessness I won't stand for. So maybe in the end, everybody hates everything we do outside of the stuff that works. The Tim Pool Daily Show and Tim Cast IRL, we have fans. Through the fans, we get members, we get support, we can sell ads. And then we're going to keep trying to expand. And maybe it won't work in the long run. But if we don't, we will resign ourselves to this kind of nightmare. This is the one that really freaked me out. Lawyers who won the gun case split. The firm dropped Second Amendment litigation. Yo, this is crazy stuff. We have to stand firm. We have to be steadfast and we have to stand up for what we believe in, regardless of, of who wants to spit in our face or mock or insult. It's funny to have these woke, weirdo, authoritarian leftists try and rag on me. It's like, bro, I don't care if you don't like the things we're doing. It's irrelevant. Some people don't like eating cake. Believe it or not, I'm not a big cake fan. You know, I cut the sugar out so I ain't going anywhere near it. Sure. Do you think a bakery cares what I have to say? I'm not giving them money. This is the most important thing about cancel culture. These big corporations are pandering to a group of people who don't care about them and don't give them money. It's like that South Park episode. He, uh, Cartman gets all scared because they're trying to put on a hippie festival. And the city's like, a big hippie jam festival is going to be great for us. We're going to make a ton of money. And he's like, hippies don't have money. Isn't that crazy? These woke lunatics go on Twitter. They harass people. They terrify them. But they don't have any money. Why are, you, why are you worried about the people who don't shop at your store? That's the weirdest thing. The New York Post, Michael Goodwin says Democrats war on ex-president Donald Trump is without precedent. No joke. They said their dream to indict Donald Trump has turned into determination, putting them on a collision course with history. No president has ever been prosecuted after leaving office with even Richard Nixon escaping the infamy, that infamy, after Watergate because of how it would tear America apart. They don't care. They will gut and burn this system to the ground. And you know what? They probably want to. It's probably their goal. Trump had more than 300 classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, the New York Times reports. The National Archives found more than 150 sen sensitive documents when it, when, uh, when it got a first batch of material from the former president in January, helping to explain the Justice Department's urgent response. Ah, OK, hold on. He had more than 300. When? You're talking about recently? Oh, we had 150 in January and he was handing them over. Interesting. What's the issue? In total, they've record, uh, recovered more than 300 documents with classified markings since he left office. The first batch in January, blah, blah, blah. OK, PolitiFact, quote, the minute the president speaks about it to someone, he has the ability to declassify anything at any time without any process. Mostly true, says PolitiFact. They say, does the president have the ability to de declassify anything at any time? 
blah, 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 independent experts. Experts agree the president as commander in chief is ultimately responsible for the classification and declassification. When people lower the chain of command, handle classification and declassification duties, which is usually how it's done, it's because they have been delegated to do so by the president directly. In the majority ruling of 19, in 1988, in the 88 Supreme Court case, Department of Navy versus Egan, which addressed the legal recourse of a Navy employee who had denied a security clearance, addresses the line of authority. Quote, the president, after all, is the commander in chief of the Army and Navy of the U.S. According to Article 2 of the Constitution, his authority to classify and control access to information bearing on national security flows primarily from, his, from this constitutional investment of power in the president and exists quite apart from any explicit congressional grant. There is no greater authority. If Donald Trump says are declassified, they are. That's why you'll notice they said classification markings because Donald Trump declassified them. They're now saying he's going to go to jail for having these. Yeah, they're burning this country to the ground. They're saying things that aren't true. He had 300 documents. Yeah, in January, when no one cared, seven months ago, they recovered some of them. And he said, sure. And according to Trump's filing, he said, whatever you need, man. They said, just put a padlock on it. And then they raided him. Interesting. In a letter, they wrote that uh, many, are, many on the left are saying it's damning to Donald Trump. It seems they are acting with urgency. Yeah, I can respect that. But Donald Trump has the unilateral declassification authority. He can just say it. There it is. Now, apparently the intelligence community tried stopping the dissemination, distribution of some of these things like Trump declassified. And they said, no, 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 no. But we don't want it being spread around like crazy. I don't know. Take a look at this from TimCast.com. Documents seized by FBI and Trump raid had info on Russiagate, a former aide says. This information has to get out to the American public, said Cash Patel. This is what people think. Donald Trump declassified Crossfire Hurricane, the Russiagate investigation. He brought copies of those documents for a variety of potential reasons. One, it may have been for memoirs. It may have been for sharing with the American public so they could know. Who knows? But he had the authority to do this. The same team, it's been reported by Real Clear Investigations, that led Crossfire Hurricane, the botched Russia collusion investigation, the hoax, led this raid on Trump's home. Could it be they don't want certain information to be getting out? Perhaps. Perhaps that is the case. I don't know how anyone can look at what's going on and conclude we aren't on track for a civil war. Shout out to Joe Rogan. He said on his show, I know I mentioned it many times, but not everybody watches every episode. So forgive me if you've heard it. I often say that, too. He said that uh, a few years ago, I went on his show and said that I thought a civil war was coming. He was like, come on, calm down, dude. It's over the top. Now I think he might be right. That's what Joe said about what I was saying. Now I think he might be right. What do you think it means when I'm saying all of this? Look, I don't know what the future has in store for us. I do not have a crystal ball. Technically, Ian does, but it's not like you can actually see the future in it. So technically, there's a crystal ball at the house. Several of them, in fact. Thank you, Ian. Um, what, I can do, what I can do is this. I can take a look at what was going on on the street level in 2016, 17, 18. People beating each other in the streets. And it was getting bigger and it was getting worse. I mean, there's one video with hundreds of people clashing. I mean, Charlottesville, look at that. I thought to myself, like, we're on track for a civil war, man. Donald Trump comes out and condemns white supremacists and they lie and claim he supported them and called them fine people. That was a lie. That's not true. He said they should be condemned totally. That's the quote. They're now trying to come up with weird scenarios how they justify him. Well, it's still what? No. You look at all that and you're like, dude, we are on track unless de-escalation happens. Donald Trump has offered to, to simmer, uh, temper things, to, to calm things down. They don't care. They hate the man. They know that if he wins, he's going to go after the Uniparty and the bureaucratic state. He's going to fire people. They would burn everything to the ground and spark civil war if it means stopping Donald Trump. And that's why I feel we're on track for this. In 2018, I said to a group of D.C. politicos, look, we're on track for a civil war. Here's why I think so. And a couple of them were like, you're nuts. It'll never happen. The security state is too strong. Here we are. I said, mark my words, the culture war will reach the highest level of government for two reasons. One, the ideology, the split in news sources will infect the minds of everyone. There will be some people who will just fall in line be it because of cancel culture or, or, or otherwise, 
and march in lockstep with Democrat lies and media lies. The other side will go to conservative and independent media and be like, that's not true. There's another reason. Young people are already bifurcated. As they get older and they get jobs in government and gain more and more authority and grant authority to each other as they grow in these in, in these institutions, they will bring the division with them. Why is it that Gen Z is based? They're not entirely, but Gen Z is the first gener- the first generation in like 100 years to be slightly more conservative than the last. Although Gen Z and millennials are almost identical in terms of their political views, Gen Z is a teeny bit more conservative in some areas. It's not because Gen Z is reading the Daily Wire. It's because there are more young conservatives because conservatives have more kids. The bifurcation already exists. And as they age, already divided, they bring the conflict with them. As a teenager, what conflict do you have? You're 16 and you're like Trump. The other 16 year old is like Trump sucks. And you're like, you're dumb and you got Twitter beef. What happens then when you're 20 and now you're in college? Now you've got Antifa street level fighting. What happens when you're 30 and you're entry level government positions? Now you're filing things against each other. What happens when you're 40 and now you are running these departments? You are raiding the homes of your political opponents. They're crazy. They've always been crazy. I know guys like you. And that's where we're going. That's where we are. I can't, I can't tell you what's going to happen. I can tell you what, what is happening now, but who knows where it will end up. What I can tell you is where I have power is culture. I'm not saying a lot. I'm not saying, you know, I, I have authority over anybody, but there's influence within the work we do. So what can I do? I don't think the path to solving these problems is to just hire a whole bunch of political commentators to, to say the same thing I'm already saying. We do want to launch some political shows. We're talking with some people because, you know, politics is still an area of general interest. But this is why the Cast Castle vlog is behind the scenes and comedy. It's why Tales from the Inverted World is mystery, uh, uh, mystery and gonzo journalism exploring certain topics. It's why Pop Culture Crisis is talking about political, uh, uh, I'm sorry, cultural politics, it's cultural political issues, but mostly pop culture. It's why Chicken City is just chickens. And it's why Timcast Records is not overtly political. We need to create a space for normal people who don't want to be involved. I I know some pro skaters, brave dudes. I'm talking about doing content with them. They don't want to do politics. They don't care about it. They care a little bit. They believe in freedom. And I'm like, let's just make skate vids, bro. We're going to build up the culture here. And I'm going to say this. The goal is simple. If you are someone who skates, scoots, bikes, plays music, whatever, and they come after you because you don't agree with the crackpot zealotry of the cult, don't worry about not being able to find work because we are building that infrastructure. It's the best way to combat what's happening. It's fortification. It's shoring up our cultural defenses because in the end, culture is everything. Politics is downstream from it. I guess we can only wait and see how this lawsuit plays out. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.